the average sale price increased just a smidge from the previous week to last week, but compared to last year at this time, wasn't so great. However, at the same time, the inventory of active listings is starting to fall. Is this a trend, the start of a new trend? Well, we'll get into the numbers in just a second. First, I'm Ron Milligan with Remax Select here in Portland's Pearl District. And as usual, I've got the weekly market update for the full petro metro area, of both Portland and Southwest Washington. So let's start off with our favorite uh, active listings, the supply of the supply and demand equation. Uh, 51, I'm sorry, 5419, which is down 125 or so from the previous week at 5548. That's a big decline. And so far this week, I haven't been seeing a lot of new listings hit the market. In the feeds that I have set up, I'm seeing um, some price reductions and then a number of pending and then a couple of solds. So um, not seeing a lot of new listings uh, hit the market this week. Of course, the numbers that we're looking at right now are from last week. Um, so I suspect that perhaps the, um, this number might start to look like more of a trend. Um, what we're expecting to see that that supply of active listings uh, decrease as both properties do un go under contract, new listings don't hit the market, and some sellers get frustrated and they let their listings uh, expire or they cancel them and um, decide that they're going to wait for a better market to sell or they put a tenant in the property, which as we know is just crazy right now. The, the rental market for single family uh, properties is extremely tight. The number of new listings that hit the market this week was down and it's down for about the third week straight. It was 509 versus the previous week, 529. And when I look at my notes from last year um, at roughly this, this time period, uh, that number was 506 versus 531. So the number of new listings last year at this time, still less than what we've had um, this year. That's kind of a new trend. That's something that we've started to see in the last three weeks or so. Prior to that, we've, had, we've been seeing far fewer listings uh, this year versus the same time period last year. The buyer demand though on the other side is also still waning. So at 509, that comes in about 20 less than we saw the previous week. And again, that's about uh, three straight weeks of declines for the number of new contracts. One of our measures of how uh, much buyer demand is out there. So we're watching that number continue to slip as we head into the holiday season, which is going to be probably a, a relatively quiet time on our market, especially um, given the interest rates that we have right now. Uh, the other measure that we often use for buyer demand is lockbox opens. Um, so uh, last year at this time, that number was around 19,222. This year I checked that lockbox opens came in at only 14,081 which is almost a 27% decrease in the amount of buyer activity. You know, the number of times that agents and their clients are out looking at properties, opening lock boxes, having showing, so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, 27% decrease is a pretty significant amount. But not surprising given the rate environment we have this year versus last year. So the number of homes that sold was, is also going down. Not a surprise because as the new contracts continues to fall, the number of homes that close is also gonna fall. That was 481 um, versus last year at this time, I checked my notes, I was 888. So nearly double the number of transactions closing last year uh, versus what we have this year. Uh, pro, uh, uh, price reductions uh, continues to fall as well. Um, so we're at 686 versus the previous week, 766, the week before that, 834. And we've been kind of in that, in that kind of uh, 830s-ish range for a few weeks prior to that. Um, the ones that were more significant of $15,000 or more, uh, there were 350 of those, which is less than we've been seeing as well um, uh, in previous weeks. Days on market is up uh, in both the median and the average, a couple on the average. Uh, and I think a couple on the median as well. Uh, average was 36 days on market last year. At this time it was 21. Uh, median was 20 last year. At this time it was seven. Uh, average sale price, which I mentioned at the, the top of the video, uh, did increase very, very slightly, only about $3,000 to 596, 389. Uh, and if you remember last week, we're at about 4.6, 4.3% higher um, this year versus the average sale price last year. Um, 
even though we did go up a little bit last year, this time we went up considerably more, about ten thousand dollars. The number was seven, uh, five seventy four seven eighteen, which is about a three point eight percent increase in the average sale price this year versus last year. What I thought was kind of interesting was that the median was almost the same. Uh, median uh, last week uh, came in at three point four. Uh, it went up to three point seven this week. Um, 539.9 versus 525 last year. So 3.7% increase in the median sale price and a 3.8% increase in the average sale price. We don't usually see that. Um, on average, homes that did sell ended up getting 95.73% of the original asking price. That's probably the lowest number we've seen so far this year. And that number continues to be falling. Keep in mind that this is not about uh, um, this is about buyer or seller expectation versus market realities. So a lot of times sellers are too aggressive and they don't realize exactly what's happened on the market. Uh, and then they hit the market and they have to have the market kind of teach them a lesson until they get their price down to a level where uh, a buyer is willing to um, come to a, 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 an agreement with the sellers. The number of homes that are in foreclosure or are bank owned or um, pre foreclosure, they're short sales. Maybe they missed a payment, they've received their notice of default, and they put their homes on the market as short sales, trying to sell them prior to the foreclosure to maybe not damage their credit quite as much. Um, that number's still really, really, really low. It's the same that we've been seeing just about for the last. Uh, uh, last few months, 25 bank owned and 17 uh, short sales, and that's active pending and short sale pending. Again, uh, uh, put up against the total number of active and pending listings, uh, which is just shy of 8,500 right now. Um, so still a really negligible number. However, I have been hearing talk about an increase, uh, at least nationally, in the number of um, uh, properties that are in pre-foreclosure. So those folks that missed a payment and received their notice of default, um, that number has been climbing, but the number that it's climbed to since the moratorium uh, for uh, foreclosures ceased back in July, that number has been climbing, but still the number is extremely, extremely low compared to what we see in a typical normal year for the number of homes in foreclosure. Maybe this is just the beginning uh, and we're going to see more. I suspect that's not the case, mainly just because uh, people have so much equity in their homes, at least still have a lot of equity in their homes uh, from the last two years of appreciation that we've seen. Um, so obviously we'll keep an eye on that and let you know if we see any changes in that section, in that, um, uh, in that statistic. Uh, the number of canceled and expireds, um, uh, canceled was a little bit higher, 194 uh, versus like 150, 170, which we typically see. And the expireds were uh, about normal for the last couple of weeks, 47. Uh, last week was 40, the week before that was 53. Like I said, we might start to see more of these properties uh, canceled and expired as we head towards the holidays. A lot of times sellers don't like to sell uh, when they're entertaining or they're having um, uh, in the middle of the holidays. Uh, and then of course next week we're going to see a lot of expireds just because we're going to cross over the end of the month and a lot of properties will just naturally expire uh, based on when realtors and their sellers put an expiration of their listing agreements. Uh, one thing that was interesting is this week the Fed did meet and did do uh, uh, their promised increase of 0.75 to their, their Fed's funds rate, which is not directly tied to mortgages. In the past, we've seen um, the mortgage market react abruptly and, and seen it at skyrocket. Other times we've seen it kind of stay flat. That's what we've been seeing so far. I just checked the, the rates before I um, jumped on, onto this video and the rates are about the same uh, that I've been seeing um, as far back as last Thursday or Friday. So very similar to last week, they didn't see that big knee jerk reaction with the rates shooting up. That may still be in the works, but at least we haven't seen that yet. Keep an eye on it, as I always say. Um, the other thing I thought was interesting, just that decrease in the number of active listings. It was good to see that just because that's what we normally see in a normal market in the Portland metro area this time of year. Um, and we had been so stagnant for so long. As I've said in the past though, one data point does not make a trend. That's one we're going to be looking at next week. Speaking of, I will see you next week. Um, as always, give me a thumbs up if you like this content. Please subscribe or share this video with someone else uh, if um, you know of someone who might be um, uh, find this information helpful.
If you wanna look at some listings, I've got some links down below. Uh, you could use our website for searching uh, real estate listings. Uh, and uh, if you're curious about the value of your home, but maybe it's not, you're not quite ready to talk to a realtor, feel free to chat with my robot. That link is also down below. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching the video to the very end, and we will see you next week.